Um, well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining our six undergraduate film and script showcase. Um, it's such a thrilling experience for me and I'm sure all the, the faculty um, to see it grow over the last three years, you know, starting with uh, three sections of Film 101 in the fall of 2017 and to see the program grow into the way it is now with 14 sections consisting of screenwriting, production, film history and analysis is a very, very cool experience. Um, the storytelling skills learned throughout all of these courses are fundamental to human behavior and in turn will impact imp valuable observations uh, to students who study them no matter where life takes them. It's, it's really been the joy uh, of my artistic life here at Stony Brook to see my students cultivate their vision, guide them through the creative process, and have them leave the class with the film that they're proud of, a souvenir that, you know, if they never choose to make a film again or the beginning of a wonderful fulfilling career that is like no other. Um, I don't think that feeling can be matched in any other academic setting. I sure never felt that way when I left a statistics class. Um, again, thank you for attending our event. We're very excited to hear your scripts and view your films. And now Amy, a fellow instructor in the program, uh, has a few words. Hi, everybody. Um, so we have found this semester that within constraint, there is great freedom. And we work together across time zones and uh, around the globe to make our art this uh, semester, uh, especially the last half of the semester. And it's been exciting to see what's um, come from the curveballs that we were all thrown. And you'll see a small sampling of the hard work and dedication, but there's so much more material from all of the sections that were you know, created this semester. And we wish we could show it all but it would be, you know, a 10 hour long showcase. So we're, we're at the two, two hour mark for this one. Um, filmmaking is all about preparation and adaptation and having a vision filled with specific intention, but being able to take whatever comes your way in the given moment and incorporate that into your art. So we're congratulating you all um, on screening your films here today and everybody in Film 101 to the uh, professors, the instructors and the students. Um, for leaning in, rising to the occasion, and um, you know, just dealing with what what came our way. So you should be really proud of the work that you did this semester. Thank you, Amy. And now uh, the exciting part: uh, I, we're before we screen the films, uh, we would like the the students who are going to be showcasing their work uh, to give a little introduction. So uh, let's get to them and, and not waste any more time. So uh, do we have uh, Misha here for a contingency? Hi guys. Hi, Hi. Misha. I'm sorry, I look like a mess. <laughs> it's all right. Hi, how is everyone? Good, how are you? I'm okay, nervous, but okay. <laughs> so um, tell us something a little bit about your film. Um, okay, it was kind of inspired by the movies that leave you with questions and kind of feel you, like, like you, you feel kind of not completely satisfied after watching them, but still somehow satisfied. Like, like I was, looking to make one of those. So I really wanted people to have questions after they watch it. That was kind of my main motive because I, I also have questions. After watching it, I was like, what, what did I just make? Great. <laughs> so I, I, I think I did it right. I don't know, but. <laughs> there is no right or wrong. Yeah, there is no right, yes, there is no right. <laughs> well, thank you, Misha, we're very excited. Um, Stephanie for Alice. I'm not sure if Stephanie's here. Okay, so maybe she'll join in a little yeah. bit. So is Emily here for uh, Dance with the Devil? Uh, yeah, that's me. Um, so my idea for the film was, um, I feel like the female perspective is lacking a bit in the film industry. And I wanted to make a film that kind of depicts or depicted an abusive relationship and the cycle of that. So yeah, that's what I was aiming for. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, uh, Brent for Onion Eyed. Um, hi, I'm Brent. Um, so the biggest inspiration for my film was David Lynch's um, 1977 movie, um, Eraserhead. Ah, great. <laughs> um, <laughs> I really wanted to make something experimental. Um, so the concept was basically um, instead of people like crying when they're chopping onions, what if an <laughs> onion cried over a person? <laughs> um, so yeah, that was what my concept was. Also, I have friends um, that want to join, so I was wondering if, I think they're in the waiting room or something. <laughs> okay. Um, um, 
Nope, the waiting, it, everyone can just hop in if they have that link, they can click right on it and get in. Okay. <laughs> okay, so yeah, if you wanna resend them, you know. Uh, I'll, I'll put the link right in the chat in just a minute. Yeah. And we resent another link in another email just in case the first one didn't work because there was a little bit of an issue with the first one. So if you see another email that came from the department, you can try that one as well. And the one uh, on the Google Classroom is, is valid as well. Um, so thank you, Brent. Uh, Iman for Trapped. Hi, uh, my name's Iman. Um, so uh, I guess like I created this film because it's about the virus and quarantining and um, it's mainly what a lot of people are going through right now. I mean, majority of people. And I just wanted to like take how I was feeling and like create something that really projects it and like I wanted to mainly create something that even if you you know future generations who are not even going through the virus if they were to see it they could feel it like as if we saw something like a, a movie about the great depression or something we could still understand their feelings um and I made it a lot more like uh I tried to keep with that intense dramatic tone and um it's just it's just so crazy to think <laughs> but yeah great uh thank you uh, let's see, um, Brianna for my last three and a half brain cells. Hi, that's me. Um, well, uh, mine was a little more lighthearted. It also dealed with uh, quarantine, kind of. Uh, I had to do a film project by myself. And then uh, I was kind of inspired be by my other classes because they're like, oh, um, for group projects, you guys can always do a Zoom call. Like, there's a lot of technology you guys can use. And um, I just thought of that. So mine's a little more lighthearted, a little more funny dealing with it, how, with this quarantine. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, and then is there Daniel for seeing through all doors? Sorry, I just got the Zoom meeting hooked on to the TV. Oh, it's okay. I'm a rising junior, and the name of my film is called Seeing Through All the Doors. Seeing Through All the Doors is about the concept of parallel universes and the timeless questions when it comes to our fate or destiny. Some <laughs> things that inspired me to make this film are the current times and the cult classic Donnie Darko. I'm a big fan of Donnie Darko, and when making this film, I wanted to touch upon its edgy, dark, and mysterious yet humbling feel. I want to thank my family for having the patience to act and help me film, and I want to thank my professor, Ms. Laskin, for conducting such a great class. However, most of all, I want to thank the Stony Brook community for giving me an enjoyable and memorable past two years. Hope you guys enjoy the film. Yeah. yeah. Great, thank you. Um, Matthew for Fast Food, the, the script reading. Hi. Um, yeah, so the prompt for my screenplay was to write a scene with at least five characters, and I kind of wanted all of them to, uh, to like, contribute to the story. It's about this... Uh, this guy who walks into a McDonald's and has a pretty ridiculous request for the for the cashier. Great, I'm excited already. Uh, Ray. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah, my my piece is really kind of uh, inspired by I guess what our modern times right now. What we're going through is kind of like a sci-fi twist of um, a post-coronavirus um, era. I kind of looked in history and how America usually it's always like split into sides and it's, you know, it's us versus them. And I kind of took that and twisted it into um, this kind of post-apocalyptic um, 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 clip. It's um, really like a, um, a pilot. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to making more episodes and actually really fleshing out the story. So this is just really just an inter introduction of something that could be much larger. Very nice. Good. And Pasquale? Pasquale? No, all right, we'll circle back if, if he joins. Uh, and uh, you long for uh, Dear Linda. Yeah, hi, sorry. Uh, hi, um, I'm Yu Long. Uh, so my piece is a short film about quarantine too. And because uh, I kind of like experienced a lot during this time and my perspective on being alone kind of changed during this time too. So, yeah. Nice. Great. Um, is there anybody else who will be screening a film uh, this afternoon that uh, I haven't called 
Uh, we would love to hear you if you're if you're present. No, Stephanie. Stephanie. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you guys made it great. Yes. <laughs> you made it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, my name is Stephanie. I am screening my film Alice today. Um, I was inspired a lot by Ari Aster and his films like Hereditary, and I was also inspired sort of by a game called A Trip Become Human. Um, I just wanted to shout out really quickly my assistant director, Dana Karapko, for that film, and my uh, production assistant, Natalie Velez, for making this happen. And yeah, I hope you enjoy. Awesome. <laughs> Great. Uh, very exciting. All right, cool. Anybody else uh, who will be screening a film uh, who would like to make an introduction or say a few words? All right, very cool. So um, unfortunately, you know, one of the consequences of, of the Zoom meetings is um, we don't have the experience of sitting together in a, in a live theater, feeling the energy and, and responding to the material. So um, I'm so sorry to interrupt um, my student, Dante. Dante, I'm yes. sorry, do you want to say something or no? It's okay if you don't. Yeah, I'll say something quick. I'm sorry. Great. <laughs> I am, hi, everyone. My name is Dante, pronouns he and his. And I just want to say thank you for everyone. And I was inspired by the um, film Moonlight. And oh. I, I'm, I wanted to create a coming out story, but mix it in with like horror because I mm -hmm. like horror also. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoy. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, very exciting. Let's get the, the show on the road. Um, please stick around if you can. Um, you know, we can't break in between and, and do the applause. Um, so we wanna do a big round of applause uh, at the end of our, our screening. Um, so please, if you can stick around, um, it's a really great program and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So I'll see you on the, the flip side. Break a leg, everybody.
It's been 10 years since the quarantine began. Everything seems to be a blur. Every day felt as though you weren't living. Time did not exist. Remembering all the happy moments, hoping you can relive them once again. We start to wonder, how did it all change so quickly, right before our very eyes? You graduated, but you couldn't celebrate. You lost someone, but you couldn't mourn. Moments you will never get to experience again. All this time, you wanted to feel that sense of freedom you once had, but you were caged. Trying to escape what felt like a simulation, but you just could not. There was no exit. You've lost the power that you used to control. But now you're here, alive. Lost. So many thoughts are rushing through your head, yet you don't know what to say. You're wondering, what's next? What to do first? What is everyone else thinking? 
but at least it's all over now. Yo, dude! Hey, everything is closed, don't you know that? It's not over. who breaks things. I have a friend who is agreeable. He doesn't always say what I want to hear. Hey, what's going on? How's it going? I have a friend who is a good listener. I have a friend who is a smooth talker. No, it's all the same. It's said and done. It's work. You gotta put in the work. That's why they call it work. Is it always fun? Yes to that. Sometimes. I think just... that some days he replaces you know? his mouthwash with Hennessy. You, you gotta just get to the point where, uh, uh, okay, 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 it, it, it needs to happen because if it doesn't happen, it's it like did. you're dying. It wasn't happening and then it was happening and it didn't happen. But you gotta dig did. deeper, there's more stuff and you just dig and, and it's, you know, it's, you gotta, it's gotta happen! I have a friend who is volatile and hedonistic in nature. He 
is trying to teach me to come out of my shell. I have a friend who is adamant. He is capable of violence. You know you gotta do, you gotta get up. You gotta get up in the morning. And then you gotta do stuff. And I find it intriguing. And everybody's doing stuff. It's all just stuff. You gotta take this stuff. There's a part of me. What are we gonna do? Who wants to be just like him? I have a friend who stays loyal. He comes from a place that I haven't been to yet. I once asked him to take me down with him. Uh, before you go, take this. It's my good luck charm. Thanks, man. See you around. I have a friend. I have a friend whose name I'm beginning to forget. The number or code you have dialed is incorrect. Please check the number or code and try again. El número o código que usted ha marcado es incorrecto. Por favor, verifique el número o código y intente de nuevo. I have a friend. I think. Just like that, Sean. Did you hear that just now?
Yo, get your back ass in here. What the fuck is wrong with you? We're not done here. Stop playing around. Yo, the fuck is wrong with you, bro? Sean, something weird just happened in my dream. Man, shut the fuck up. Probably think about that girl who was giving you some head. No, it was, it was something else. I, whatever, man. I'm about to head out anyways. Need to go to class. Fuck, not again. Hey, have we met before? Are we in the same lab, class, church? What do you want from me? Don't miss. Stay away. Bro, chill. Shut the fuck up already. What'd you do that for? For real? I'm gonna need you to stop having that dream. And if you keep having it, I'm gonna need you to start running away like the wimp that you are. And actually face it, head on. It's not that easy, man. Really? I'm serious, though. Stand up to this person and see what the fuck is going on. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Tell me, time doesn't matter now. All right, Bradley, you got this. Just stay focused. All you gotta do is just don't wake up. That's all you gotta do. Just don't wake up. What is that thing? It looks like Sean. Don't miss your shot. I, 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 I don't. I don't miss your shot. Poor, poor, Just tell him. I, I tell I, him. I don't. Wait. Hey, I've got something to tell you. What's up? So, you know that person that's been in my dreams? 
Yeah. Well, it wasn't a check. It was... Interior, McDonald's, lunchtime. A young man, Jordan, fresh out of high school, works a register. His words are polite, but his tone says otherwise. The look on his face shows he's tired of his job. The restaurant is fairly noisy from the daily lunch rush. Jordan, holding a paper bag, is tending to a customer, a middle-aged woman. You're the number seven with the caramel frappe? Yeah, that's me. Jordan hands her the bag. Have a nice day. Jordan's eyes focus on the next customer approaching the register. Hi, what can I get for you? The customer, Jeffrey, stares at the menu, confused. He is middle-aged, gray hair creeps onto his head, and he's not in the best of shape. His attire is simple, not too casual, not too formal. Dad-like. A short line of three people wait behind Jeffrey. Uh, hold on. I'm not sure. Jordan tries not to roll his eyes. He waits awkwardly as Jeffrey drops his confused look for a confident one, accompanied by a smile. Okay, I'll have two double cheeseburgers, but make them fat-free. Jordan's eyes widen, clearly taken aback by the request. His eyebrows furrow. I'm sorry, what was that? I'd like two fat-free double cheeseburgers. Oh, and a medium Sprite. Jordan remains confused. Hold on, let me talk to my manager about that. Jordan turns around to get his manager's attention, while Jeffrey waits patiently. Lois, I need you for a second. Lois walks over from the back of the kitchen. She is a short, energetic woman. She walks fast and is quick with words. What's up? Jordan speaks low, but loud enough to hear him from the front of the line. Two more people have joined the line. Guy over here is saying he wants a fat, free double cheeseburger. What? Does he know where he is? Well, what do you want me to say? I'll talk to him. Lois steps over to the register with a big smile on her face. Jordan looms behind her. Jeffrey is confused by her presence. Hi, how can I help you? I asked the young man for two double cheeseburgers and a medium Sprite, but the burgers be fat-free. Sir, we don't have fat-free burgers. Oh. Well, what do you have that's fat-free? A businessman online, maybe 40 years old, chimes in. Hey, buddy. You're at a McDonald's, not a salad bar. An old man named Carl, who is filling out crossword puzzles and has clearly been there all day, joins the conversation from a nearby table. Lois, get him a salad. The dressing has fat in it, but a salad is the best I can do, un unless you just want a water. Jeffrey appears frustrated. You mean to tell me every item on your menu has fat in it? Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying. Jeffrey turns around online to gauge other people's reactions. The rest of the line is frustrated, but only because they are being held up. Three more people have now joined the line that is eight customers total, extended to the door. Are you kidding? What kind of restaurant is this? Jeffrey takes a step forward and puts his hands on the counter. My doctor says I have to be more aware of my diet. What am I supposed to eat? A salad. Lois shouts over to Carl at his table. Thank you, Carl. She returns her attention back to Jeffrey. I can offer you a salad or a grilled chicken wrap. They both have fat in them, but they're the healthiest things we have. I only eat the burgers here. Hey guy, can you move this along? Some people are here on their lunch break. Jeffrey turns around to yell at him. Hey, I'm trying my best up here, relax. The line is now out the door. I can get you your burgers, but they're gonna have fat in them. Are you trying to kill me? I can't eat fat or I'll be dead before my next birthday. Come on, get the guy out of here. Jeffrey turns around again and raises his finger at the man. How about you shut the f- hey. Everybody stops speaking. It is deafeningly silent in the dining area. Jordan has two burgers in his hands. Sir, have your double cheeseburgers right here. I took the fat out just for you. Jordan places the burgers in a bag and puts it down on the counter. That'll be three ninety nine. Jeffrey takes out five dollars and hands it to Jordan. He grabs a bag off the counter. Keep the change, young man. Thank you. Have a nice day. Jeffrey turns and walks out with a smile on his face. Everyone in the restaurant is confused and remains silent. 
Carl breaks the silence. You forgot his sprite. End scene. So, does anyone have any ideas for our final project? Okay, so, um, just throwing it out there, what I was thinking was, what we can do is, yo, what are you doing? Huh? Oh, I was just getting the creative juices okay. going. Are you in the bathtub right now? Yeah, this is, this is my office, man, like, my best ideas come from this bathtub. Just think of anything for our final project, okay? Um, excuse me, how much longer do we need to do this for? We actually have a nail appointment in 30 minutes, so... Um, we literally just started this call, but, like... How, how are you getting your nails done? Isn't, like, everything closed right now? Um, of course the nail person's gonna come here. I mean... Isn't that so, like, a huge health risk? I mean, it's fine. They Don't they wear those mask things anyways when they do my nails? Okay, so, um, does anyone else have somewhere to be then? Oh, I have to be somewhere. Like, I have to be in a meeting in an hour, by the way. You work? Oh, no. I don't work. It's actually, it's for my support group for alcoholism. Because it's part of the deal that my... Lawyer made when I went to trial because I blacked out and I stole a university police car and crashed it in a fountain. Apparently that's illegal. Okay, so since some of us have places to go after this, like, let's start on this project. So, um, actually I haven't heard you say any- Oh my god, wait one second. I've been waiting in this drive through line for like an hour, and it's finally like my turn to order. So like, give me, give me like one second. Oh, hi, can I like- Wait one second, like, have you seen that thing on TikTok with that drink? And like, it's like a pink drink, but like, there's a lot of other stuff in there. Like, do you know how to make it? Like, do you know what I'm talking about? So, I'm actually gonna go right now. Let me know when you guys finish, and, um, bye! Uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later, cause I'm, like, really hungry right now, and I can't hear out of my left ear unless I eat, so, like, talk to you guys later. It's only 1%, guys, okay, so if my phone dies, then I'm sorry.
sure I'd love to lick public doorknobs while also dressed in cannabis leaves and standing less than six feet apart. What time? Heroin? Sure, I'd be down. I'll text you on my way. because you smoked and didn't observe proper social distancing. Also, you should vote and don't text and drive. Pot is the devil's salad. What is this even about? I don't know, man. Just don't go outside or something. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Send me a kiss by wire. Baby, my heart's on fire. learning about kitchen safety. Today, we're gonna be working with peppers and onions. Okay, let's get started. That's right. What you have to do first is wash your hands. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with warm water and soap to prevent the spread of unwanted viruses and diseases. Okay, now you can start. Just kidding! You also have to wash the vegetables. A knife like this and a slippery round object like this is a recipe for disaster. To ensure you don't lose any body parts, place the flat edge on the flat surface and we'll start cutting. When you're awake, the world might be a different place, but we have taught you everything you need to survive. They're coming. We gotta get to sanctuary. Son, life is a game, and if you play it well, you will win. I love you, son. Survive.
Reality. It's a pretty complicated concept if you think about it. Some of us take it for granted, and some others embrace it like there's no tomorrow. What controls our reality, however, is up to you. Maybe you might think that we all have set past the sort of our existence. Or maybe we are truly in control of our own destinies. Whatever it might be, I am here to tell you that it's all a door, and there exist multiple doors. Behind each of them, a million worlds, all different and similar, each of them with their own constants and variables. Listening to me, Bob. Listen, stop bothering me, okay? Okay, I don't, I don't need this right now. Okay, I'm heading home. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right, bye. Responsibilities like work and school, and by the way, your mom is worrying about you. Listen, I could care less about being a family. Listen, listen I don't need your team's attitude right now, okay? Yeah, when, I, when I get the chance, I'll be out, okay? Yeah, but you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, but right now, you're living in this house, it's right not a cartel, you understand? Bob, is it okay? Hi, David. Please, go wash your hands, change all of your clothes, then come downstairs. I need to know who you've been with today. No problem. I understand. Our aggressive containment strategy here in the United States has been... Daniel, it's too loud. Can you stop, please? Yeah, that means two things. One... The answer to containing is public health measures. We can't rely on the vaccine over the next seven months to a year. Okay, I'm back now. What's up? This hey, Dave, so listen, we have to stay home for a while. Uh, I don't know for how long, but just uh, to be safe and stay home and wait for the news. And, uh, if that's the case, so who do you Constants and variables. In this world, a pandemic happened. Pretty unfortunate. In other worlds, a war or a natural disaster happened. And in some, nothing. I can see through all the doors, and even if I can't change the fate that this world is destined to play out, I feel as if I can change others.
Okay, what's the problem? Mind the house, please. Leave me alone. No, with this kind of attitude, you're not gonna anywhere in life, you know that. Listen, you don't even know what I want to do in life. Yeah, of course I don't know what you want to do in life because you look like you, you act like a, like a stranger these days. Listen, I know you want to be in my case so bad, but the truth is I don't care for you, I don't care for mom, and I don't care for this family. I'm going to be my own person, and you know what? I'm going to do that right now. Yes, I love you. Yeah. Hey, you No, he doesn't really feel well. He, he, he really seems to be. I think he got the girl on the Yeah. Driving. What do you think that will get you? Just a lifetime of misery and regret. Who's there? Your loved ones are an integral part of you, you know. Cherish them. It's a shame what you're doing. You only have one life, and you make the best of it. What the hell? Mom and Dad love you, you know. All you do is cause pain and suffering to them with your selfish ways. Eventually, their time or even yours will come, and you will regret it. Hey, baby. What's going on? Wake up. Let me call a doctor. What's going on, David? Talk to me, please. Oh my god, David. Uh, Jenny, where have you been? So happy to see you. It's another day. Another cup of coffee. Another day of TV. Hello to our viewers in the United States and, and the same Washington, news. Washington, it's been two months of the same routine. It hasn't been easy, but I've found a way. ...in which we talked about how we can operationalize things when we measure them. i found ways to pass time. (laughs) 
I've found some new hobbies. I've basically tried everything at this point. Sometimes it all seems like a bad dream that one day I'll return back to reality. But other days I'm forced to remember. Planet this week, another major retail giant is filing for that this is our new reality. Dear Window, I know we have been keeping each other company for a really long time, but I feel like I never really introduced myself to you. Especially the most important thing about me. <laughs> you probably have already figured it out, but yeah, I hate being around people. If there's a sunny day, I would go outside too. But only because those tiny little things always inviting me to go explore the unexpected beauty in nature. And then there comes the unwanted. Yes, people. People who talk and laugh and talk and laugh constantly, repeatedly and loudly. Unfortunately, this unwanted social occasion requires wearing makeup and it's inevitable. Looking good is important in front of people. It's being polite. And I mean, we live together after all, but it doesn't mean we're close. It's important to be applied to somebody that's not close to you, right? Until you realize their constant repeat and loud talk and laugh is too much to bear. It's just not worth it. Instead of having a gathering of everyone wears a cosmetic mask, I could have done things I really love and care about. Yeah, you guessed it. I fleed. Speaking of wearing makeup like wearing a mask, I prefer taking it off. To be honest, I'd rather wearing this mask. All people in public must have a mask or nose covering, mouth and nose covering. And now some area governments are going a step further with face covering mandates. It comes as the CDC is urging all Americans, especially those in hot spots, to wear non-medical masks. COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by a new coronavirus introduced to humans for the first time. One, 
Stay home. Social distancing is vitally important for many reasons. Some of the general principles are to limit movements outside of your home. That's exactly what I wanted. Why didn't people do this sooner? Don't get me wrong, because I have so many things to do at home. For a start, playing with the sunlight. And then use the most ancient way to keep track of time. Thank you to you, I had this most wonderful view, and to be frank, I don't really see the passage of time, every day is a pleasure, only I see other stuff through another window, the window of the world, the internet, you can't avoid them. They are there, just like my acceptance letters are there. It's happening out there, and people are all talking about it, which makes it more realistic than what's happening about me. It looks like the world is rotting, but I'm sprouting. The world situation is so different from mine right now. Deep down, I feel like I'm not allowed to be happy, even though I know I deserve it. Am I supposed to feel ashamed of getting congratulations while somewhere out there people are suffering? Right now, all the congrats sound sad and pale. If there's no celebration, what are the congratulations for? Every day is the same. I can feel the weight of solitude. Unbelievable. I never hated being alone so much. And I'm so long. Silence is so loud that I can hear everything in my head. But I can't make myself hurt anymore.
if quarantine taught me anything at all, I'd say I learned that I don't hate people. I just hate not being with the ones I love. Dear Window, thank you for being my support, my buddy, and my love. In the past, the uh, animation for me was just a tool for entertainment. The animation Violet Evergarden caught my attention when the first time I saw the trailer. The gorgeous background, its creative character setting impressed me a lot. And the story in it changed me. The image in Japanese anime is not based on the characteristic of its own national character. So like the standard of image of a yellow man with black hair, black eyes, and yellow skin but it focuses on the combination of the East and West. The audience are all the people who pursue beauties. All the characters in anime are handsome and beautiful. Like different characters use virtual beauties to attack my perspective. Whenever I look at those characters I will be like, wow, what if I can create something like this. The theme are all interpret our real life. They are all active and positive, educating young people like me to work hard and establish the correct value of life. And the story in it is fascinating. In most part of anime, suspense triggers the next suspense and it will be changed that you will never expand at any time every night even i don't have any time i will be like to spend some time just sitting in front of the tv like that and just watching one of the episodes of the anime it brings me too many surprise and surprise sometimes it is difficult for me to imagine how the next part will be developed it gives me a reason to watch Anime never avoid violence like homosexuality and negative vocabulary. They are trying to impress the audience with the twisting and touching story and convey some important message to the audience. Like the audience understand like what the friendship is, what love is and like what you should do in facing the difficulties and challenge. It is just like everyone's life. People are not simply good people or bad people. And success does not necessarily require hard work. This is real life. This is why it's so attractive. But later in one day, my mom said I was wasting too much time on it. And if I keep going, that I might cannot do anything in the future. It is the first time I decide to make something on my own to show my passion, to prove myself to others that I can, I can do something. I mean, if you don't believe me, I will show you. It is a different chapter in my life, and a new chapter in my life.
Every day, I wake up. I start to think about the story. What will be the character? What will be the next plot? What will happen in the end? During that time, almost every day, I spend a lot of time just sitting there and drawing on my iPad. It took me three months just to finish up the storyboard. Even though there was someone help me to do that, but I don't know what I should do to finish all the step and that I had to make an animation. I started to struggle and get frustrated, and the more I tried, the more frustrated I got, which was the most depressed moment for me. There is a peach tree in the backyard where I live. I remember that I used to sit under the tree for a while whenever I encounter a problem. I mean, it calms me down. One day, when I was thinking, I said, "This is my life. Whatever is going, I'm losing it. But I go up a difficulty, and I have to use this moment in the best and possible way. And the only thing which helped me and kept me going, which made me stronger for my future, was hope." Later in one day, I explained my difficulties to my teacher, and he suggested me that I could use 3D software instead of drawing. Maybe it will be easier for me to do what I want. It is another way for me to complete my work. It gave me a variety of tools that I could use to create my animation faster than drawing. And actually, I was really glad that I told him that thing at that time. I remember this thing. The background is the beach, and at that time, my skill level did not allow me to use the software to create a beach like on my own. So I actually had to went to the beach and record the real one and put them together. But I remember on that day when I arrived at the beach, it was rain heavily in the morning because it took me. Took so much time just travel from my home to the beach, so I had to wait in the car and pray that the rain would stop. In fact, maybe the car hit me. The rain stopped before the sun went down. At that time, if the time was a little bit later, maybe my plan will be wasted. I made one of the scenes in three months. I can't imagine how long it will take if I really have to finish all of it. But just like what happened in the anime, the main hero not may not succeed even if he tried hard. But this is how life is, and this society forces you to keep you going. There are one thing that I learned from anime which makes me unforgettable, is that as soon as you stop thinking that it's possible, you stop dreaming it, you give up, and all the things that are difficult are something that people think it is impossible. But if you make it possible, your life will change. We can give a, a big round of applause to everybody. We could, un we could unmute, maybe will that destroy the, <laughs> the Zoom? <laughs> or we could just, yes. Uh, really great job to everybody uh, trained. And I'm sure, like Amy stated earlier, you know, the work between all the sections was, was really spectacular. So um, 
Really fantastic job. I wanted to take a moment to thank uh, Karen Ofitzer, our uh, program director, uh, for her leadership and her um, really amazing work cultivating this through. Like I said, this is the third you know, complete year, um, the sixth screening uh, based on the semester. So uh, thank you, Karen, for, for all of your help. Um, you know, it's it's a challenge dealing with all of our crazy artist antics <laughs> throughout the, the semester. Um, so Amy, I know you had a, a brief, uh, Oh, you're, you're muted. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yes, so anybody who's here who um, isn't already in 101, we want to let you know that we have a 101 and 102 that's starting next week. So if you're interested in joining us for a summer session, which is a little more condensed, we'll be meeting twice a week for live lectures and screenings. So please um, feel free to spread the word and register because we'd love to see more work uh, come out of our department. And um, yes, thanks to, to Karen and to everyone. Um, we all try to pull together. We're growing a department and it's really been a pleasure to, to work with everyone and to see all of your work that, that's come out of this. So yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. So, um, you know, I just don't want to leave in case you guys have questions or or uh, comments about any of the material you saw today. I know some of the filmmakers are here. If you have any questions for them, you know, you could take this moment now to uh, to think about it. And does anyone no. Um, well, that's okay. And, uh, it, you know, one of the great things about when we used to be at the Wang Center uh, was the cookies. Uh, so I think the department yes. is mailing cookies every, to everybody. <laughs> right, Karen? Is that a thing? <laughs> no, just, no, cookies and coffee. Uh, but hopefully in the fall, we're, we're back at it um, and we can have an in-person screening. Because like I said previously, that's um, one of the true great wonders of the world is a, is a film screening uh, where you get to sit next to people and, and feel the energy off of the screen and, and next the one another. So um, again, thank you for attending. Um, I don't know if anyone has any last words uh, that they'd like to say. Um, yes, I do. Said, Bravo, everybody. Um, Karen has something. Mates, family turned actors. Uh, yeah, I just want to say that that was really amazing. And the work that's been done uh, in people's homes in the last couple of months was truly wonderful and inspiring. And I just want to thank you all for for participating in this. It was really amazing. Um, I've loved every semester that we've done this, but this one was by far, you know, the most amazing stuff I've seen. So congratulations to all of you. It was really terrific. Really great. Thank you. Great. Um, well, yeah, I guess we just stare at each other now for a few more hours. <laughs> 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 have a wonderful summer. Yeah, Congratulations have a good summer. to the seniors. Congratulations if you're graduating. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye.